What's going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today and today we have Barrel Craft Spirits. We've had them on our channel a lot. This is a bottle that they sent me. I always like to be transparent about that. This is the cash strength. Obviously they only have one release that's not cash strength. The foundation which is actually really really good. It's 100 proof but this is the cash strength finished in Mizanora. I believe I'm saying that correctly. We're going to talk about all of that and more as we get into it but everybody knows before we get started time for the traditional sip. Cheers y'all. It always drinks easy. That's right, we have another bottle by Barrel Craft Spirits. These guys just pump out whiskey and they pump out some great whiskey. This, the one thing that I always love about Barrel Craft Spirits is they tell you everything that you need to know right here on the bottle. They tell you the blend components. This has Indiana six, seven, and nine year. It has Kentucky eight year, and then Tennessee eight and 14 years. The derived mash bill is corn 76%, rye 20%, which leaves us with 4% malted barley. Now this is actually finished in Mizanora for a year and a half. So while this says it is aged six years, that's gotta be the youngest whiskey that goes into the bottle, which is obviously six years, but we've got some eight, 14 year old stuff in this. We've got other eight year old, nine, nine year old stuff in this. So this is actually a much older bottle than a six year old age statement. I have to move the bottle over here because it bothers me every time I got to lift my arm up and over the bottle. But this thing right here is just another example of why Barrel Craft Spirits is so good at what they do. They don't try and do anything outside of what they do. They take great whiskey that they find from other companies. They blend it perfectly almost every time. Every single bottle, I believe there's obviously some better blends than others, right? 35 and 34 stood out to me. 33 was really good. I know before that people were complaining a little bit about the particular blends, but 33 for me was a banger. 34 was right up there. I still love 35. I'm sure 36 is going to be out and about soon if it's not already. But this bottle right here is still some great blended product coming out of Barrel Craft Spirits. And then the Mizanora finish, which we're really going to focus on for this particular bottle. We're going over everything. Price, taste drinkability. We always start with drinkability. We didn't even talk about the proof on this. The proof of it, this is coming in at 116.42 proof. So let's try this one more time. We'll talk about drinkability and give it a score. The one thing that Barrel Craft Spirits always gets right for me is drinkability. Now, whether it's their batch stuff, batch 33, 34, 35, whether it's their finished stuff, they always seem to blend out that ethanol or at least cover it up with some of these fantastic finishes that they have on this. This is another prime example of that. This is 116.42 proof. We'll call it 116 proof for the rest of the video. And it doesn't drink like that. I will say, I don't think I would blind it much lower than that. And we do always give it a 7.0 if it drinks right at its proof. I'm going to say like a 7.29. We'll go right below 7.3 on this, but I'm going to take one more sip to be sure. Yeah, 7.29 seems like a fair spot. Again, it's going to be a lot harder to get into those eights and especially into those nines this year. But drinkability wise, that's a great score. We're 7.3. It drinks under its proof. It's still 116 proof. This is something that you're going to truly enjoy, especially with the flavors that we're going to talk about when it comes to taste. 7.29 is where we're going to put it. Let's get into taste now. Now, at this point in making these reviews for whiskey, I will say I do try to avoid other people's reviews before giving my own, just because I don't want your opinion to sway mine. I don't want to see somebody that I respect, see their opinion or maybe their tasting notes on it, it gets stuck in my head. So at this point, I try to avoid other people's reviews. For this particular bottle though, Barrel does such a good job at connecting with the community that it was almost impossible to avoid. So I will say there seems to be like a split decision on this particular bottle. People either love it or hate it. There's no real in-between on this. I think I'm going to fall more towards the middle actually, which I haven't seen a lot of. Now, Mizanora also kind of gets like a bad rep recently. It seems like people think it's a fade or fad. I don't know why I said fade. A fad and it's like overplayed and it's overpriced because Mizanora is overpriced price and it was going to be one of those trends that comes and goes. Now, I don't really mind what you finish your stuff in as long as it tastes good. I think for me, this particular glass tastes good. Let's get into the actual tasting notes that I get though. Yeah, I mean, I really do think I like this glass of whiskey. I don't think it's anything crazy or outstanding or anything like that. But the tasting notes that I get, first of all, it tells you on the one cheater. I love when Barrel sends out the one cheater because it gives you all the information you need. It tells you that there's sandalwood, herbal spices, and then what's the last thing that they mentioned? Coconut, when it comes to the actual Mizanora finish. Now, I'm the type of guy that does not like coconut. Now, people tell me all the time, they'll give you a cookie or something with coconut in it, and they'll be like, you won't even taste the coconut. I'm like, I don't like coconut. They're like, you won't even taste it. I taste it. I promise you that I taste it. In this particular glass, I'm not getting any coconut. Sandalwood, I don't really know what that is, but the herbal spices are definitely on this glass, and I don't hate that at all. 
Now there's also a honey note on this and I don't know why, but this seems to be a trend in a lot of whiskeys that I've been having lately. Maybe my palate is particularly sensitive to honey of late, but it just seems like there's a very good honey note on this and it doesn't seem like that manufactured honey note. I also get a very, very predominant lemon zestiness on this. There's some type of lemon zestiness on this. And again, in that one pager, they say lemongrass, which I don't know if I've ever had lemongrass, but there is a lemon note on this. All of this again, blended so well. And again, without that coconut flavor in there, maybe I like sandalwood, maybe I like that herbal spices that they're talking about because that sweetness with that honey with that lemon and again with that spiciness on this is blended so well i like this a lot I shouldn't say a lot. Again, I do enjoy this. I just don't think I love this. I don't think there's anything exceptional about this. I do think Barrel has some other stuff out there that is better than this. I do think Mizanora is on the way out. Again, I don't mind if it's here, there, or it's 100 years from now and nobody even has a Mizanora tree. If you make good whiskey, you make good whiskey. I think this is good whiskey. We give it a 7.0 if it's an average tasting whiskey. I'm going to finish this off and call it and give you a score on taste. I had to look back on my notes to see what I gave it for drinkability because I was literally thinking in my mind 7.29, but I thought that's what I gave it when it came to drinkability, but I can't, I got to go with my gut, right? 7.29 is where we're going to put this on taste as well. I think it's just above average when it comes to taste on this as well. I think it's a very well blended barrel craft spirits, but I don't think the Mizanora truly does enough for me. I do want to put this up against like their 33 or 34 or 35 or maybe multiple of those bottles to see what kind of differences I get between this and something that's not finished from them. So maybe we'll do that one day, but 7.29 is where we're going to put it for taste as well. And last but certainly not least, we're going to get a price on this and we give it a 7.0 if it's an average bottle of whiskey at $75, which we're using as like our cutoff for the average price of a bottle of whiskey today. Let me know if I'm right or wrong on that. But this bottle comes in at $84.99, so just above average when it comes to that $75 price point. But it's just above average when it comes to taste. It's just above average when it comes to drinkability. So I feel like that's going to even itself out and this has to be back towards average. Now we're going to skip our bourbon bomb of the week this week because we don't really have too much to talk about. We've talked about barrel quite enough on this channel and we've already talked about Mizanora. I will make sure we put all those videos somewhere above us as we go, but we're going to give this like a 7.01 when it comes to price. Again, I think everything kind of averages itself out with being a little bit above and then a little bit above when it comes to price as well. So a 7.01 is where we're going to put it when it comes to price. So when we don't do a bourbon bomb of the week, we like to do something called my thoughts on what I've been thinking. We're going to keep it very short and sweet, but I do want to talk about, I was actually on a live stream. I believe Jason from the Mash and Drum, I don't know if he put this video out yet or not, but he was talking about the things that he's skipping coming this year with whiskey. He's skipping this particular release. He's skipping this particular blend. He's skipping this particular finish. And I believe Mizanora was one that he was going to add to that list. I got to know, what are your thoughts on Mizanora? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you not really care about it? If you find something that you do enjoy, that's Mizanora. For me, again, I don't care what you do to your whiskey. If it tastes good, it's good for me. As long as it doesn't raise the value too crazy. And on this particular bottle, it doesn't. I believe a lot of their bottles are in that $85 to $90 range. So for me, I don't mind if this is Mizanora, if this Mizanora thing is on the way out and they drop something two years from now that is Mizanora again. I just got to know what you guys think about Mizanora and that's my thoughts on what I've been thinking or what I've been drinking, I should say. But let's get into the final score on this and tell you all about what I think of this Barrel Craft Spirits. So this bottle is going to come in at a 7.20 and in the past, that might not be a very good score, but here in 2024, you can see on our list right here, that's a very good score. It's third place right now. We don't have 10 bottles quite yet, but again, it's going to be hard to get into those eights and especially into those nines. I got to know in the comments, section below. One, if you've had this bottle, what you think about it. And two, if you're into or out of this Mizanora thing, let me know in the comment section below. But that's where we're going to leave you for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. Check out our Patreon page and our Discord. Both those links in the description below. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. We got a lot coming up on the channel, including a Patreon hangout in person. So make sure you follow that Patreon. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Stay trying Mizanora or anything else as long as it's good whiskey. Cheers, y'all.